All right, this video is to walk you through an OpenVPN server install in a very automated way. So a lot of people maybe don't want to use some other third-party VPN provider so they can protect them privacy from, you know, all the hops in between you and whoever you're providing your VPN. And you're looking for a solution besides one of the commercial ones. You want to install it yourself. This script makes that really easy. So I'm gonna leave the links below to the GitHub project that's on here. Uh, they actually have some suggestions for one of the VPN hosting you use, which is Bandwagon Host. I actually already have a Linode account, so I'm gonna demo this in Linode, but you can use your own home server for this. It just based on the script, you need a CentOS, Ubuntu, or Debian distribution to run this on. So it's pretty diverse. Now, I, I know a lot of times I do these on PFSense, but if you just wanted to have your own server spun up in a cloud hosted environment or at your house, for example, so you want a VPN from somewhere else to your house, this script will get you started really, really fast. All open source. Um, and I'm you know, not always the biggest fan of auto magical scripts unless you can look at them because this one's open source, like you can trust it that it's doing what it says it does and you can walk through everything here. So this is a fun way to learn how to set these up. We're gonna choose a brand new line on servers. What I'm gonna do is do this from scratch. So to show you from loading the system, which I'm not gonna do a tutorial on how to load Linux uh, hopefully I have other tutorials and some of that, but this will get you started from once you have it loaded to what needs to be done to get it up and running. So we're going to pick our location and I'm in the US in Detroit. So we're going to choose London. So it makes it real easy to see that I'm currently in Detroit with my IP address. And then we're going to get me over to London. So uh, add this line node. And this process is going to vary a little bit from, you know, different systems. So I'm going to go out of here and give it a name real quick. And PN demo. All right, save changes. Now we're going to deploy an image, and I'm I'm a big fan of Debian, so that's the image we're going to do. And I'll put my secret super secret password in here. All right, now it is off and running, creating this, and then once it's done, we're going to boot it up and log into it. All right, the system is all set up and running. So I can just uh, copy this IP address and paste it in over here to better than typing. Yes, and then I'm gonna put my super secret password in. Now at this point, one of the things you may want to do is disable keyboard authenticated access because anytime there's a SSH port open somewhere, there's immediately bots hammering away at it. So I will uh, take a second to do that. If, uh, and I'll let you, I'll put in here what I'm doing to secure this. So I know I can log into this. I'm like, great, that works. And I want to exit. So the first thing I do is push my public key over to this. That way I can disable uh, interactive login on here. Just a little side note that if you don't set a really secure password, bots might guess it and they're hammering away at all these servers as they get spun up. So probably keyboard authentication you should turn off. And if you haven't used this, once you have your key set up, you can use SSH copy ID, the password for there. It's going to copy it over. Paste in the password for the last time. Paste. All right, now it's done. So now when I go SS, clear this again. And I SSH in. It doesn't ask me for a password nor it's using public key authentication. And then you wanna turn off keyboard authentication. So that's here. Password authentication, no. There we go, no more keyboard authentication logged in here. From the rest of this, you can skip that part, that's up to you, this is just a little security recommendation so you don't accidentally get one of your machines out here pwned. So, now let's go back to the script and talk about what it's gonna do. So here's the install script, and it's the simple here, wget https git.io slash vpn dash o open vpn install sh and then execute it. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna download this script, which you can see here, and 
run through all the options in it. And the second part of this is first download the script, script to wget, and then bash execute the script. So we'll go ahead and dump this whole command in. I know someone's gonna call me out and say, don't copy and paste commands off a of website. That's probably true because there's a whole lot of things bad that can happen, but let's assume this is trusted. You could just type this in by hand if you're concerned. But for convenience of this uh, demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and paste this in and I'll show you what it does. Runs through the install setup. So which protocol do you wanna use for open VPN connections, UDP or TCP? UDP is recommended, so we'll leave that at default. Port 1194, no problem. Current resolvers, Google, OpenDNS, Hurricane Electric, Verisign. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put Google's DNS in there. I trust them. I like their DNS servers. Name of the client certificate. We're gonna call this LTS Demo Client. That's all I need to set up your OpenVPN server, OpenVPN server now. Press any key to continue. So I'm gonna let this fly real quick. Take a second, it's gonna go out there and get everything needed to make this happen. This is gonna pull all the files it needs, all the different support libraries it needs to run OpenVPN server on this node. Now here it creates the keys because you have to generate a set of keys for this. And now it's done. Literally, that's it. OpenVPN server is running. Up, running, enabled, no problems. Now, the important part now is you're going, how do I connect to it? And that's actually where this script gets clever even more. And that, I'm going to take a list over here. And there is the name of it, ltsdemoclient.ovpn. That file is all I need to get this thing connected. So let me show you the genius of this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a window over here so I can get that file over to my computer. And we just need to SFTP to that address there. So SFTP colon slash root at 139.162.228.79. All right, and there's our file, the LTS demo client dot VPN. So we're gonna copy that. And I just pasted it over here into Home, no big deal. Now, this is a uh, Caden KDE Neon that I'm running, which is a Ubuntu-based distribution, Debian backend. So th these commands work perfectly fine from there. So what we're going to do now is go back over to here and we're going to log out, clear screen. Now, all I had to do was sudo apt get install open VPN. That's the only other command I did on this computer locally to get this to work, which is already done. So it'll probably tell me it's the latest version already. Latest version. Now, the important part here is that we use sudo. So sudo open VPN space LTS demo client. It auto completes. Enter. All right, and this is what you see at the very end. Initialization sequence completed, pretty straightforward. We'll switch back over to a browser. I like IP chicken, I don't know, I can always remember it. It's easy to remember. There is the IP address, 139.162.228.79, which is the same as my live node, 139.162.228.79. That's it. That couple minutes of this video, we have now run through, set it up, and executed. So it's running here on this server, in my cloud-hosted server. It is now, my public IP address is this, and I've hidden my traffic via VPN from Comcast, who's my normal provider here at my office. And boom, I'm surfing the web here. So anywhere I go, uh, I think I can geo IP look up and test my own IP address here. There's the 139. I'm now in London as far as anyone's concerned. Now this works with, like I said, as long as you can get, and I, I'm partial to Debian, but there's a couple others like CentOS that's supported and Ubuntu is supported. 
lots of different options for different places that have cloud hosting so you can get these connected and it's you know pretty easy to do and that script just takes care of it it creates the file you can run the script again if you want to make some changes to it and once it's installed you can go and manually edit the config files and change them to your liking but it's all you needed was that file now also let's do a speed test so let's uh go ahead and we'll do the google one speed test run speed test and see what happens here now this is the sacrifice you're going to make I have normally substantially more speed. And I've actually run this before, before I did this demo. I did this before, and there's a lot of variation in the numbers, at least with the London servers. I did try the London one last time. I did try the Singapore one, and it was slower. So this is going to be a limitation of what you have at your hosted provider. The other thing I've noticed is it varies a lot. I actually took this on my laptop and had it running over the weekend, and some places gave me much better speed than others, which is kind of strange because it doesn't seem to correlate exactly to the speed tests with uh, the non-VPN. So right here was my VPN speed test, and we're gonna go ahead and shut off the VPN. And just hit Control-C, we're gonna cancel it. And it says servers in London, so it says my internet speed is slow, latency is this, so you know it thinks I'm in London. So now we'll uh, put speed tests in again and run it again back up to 50, which is what we're paying. We're actually paying for a 50 meg circuit right now here, and I'm getting the 50 meg circuit. And it thinks I'm in Chicago. Uh, I don't know why. Sometimes it shows Chicago, sometimes it shows Detroit, uh, depending on where I do the speed test at, but here it is again here. Now that, and like I said, this is gonna vary based on even geolocation. So if you have your VPN server here in the US and you're in the US, if you have it geographically close to you, it's gonna go faster. It does not take a lot of processing power to run the VPN on there. And I'm gonna actually show you that real quick. So we'll go back over to here and start up our VPN again. So just sudo open VPN and the name of it. All right, we're gonna SSH back into here from another window. I'm gonna put H top on here, so I think it looks better than just running top. So here's the system. I'll leave this in the background here, and then we're gonna go back over here and do the speed test. So move the window down a little bit. So of course at idle, we're using like no CPU at all. And I'll run the speed test over here in this one. I'll cut it over to the side a little bit. And you can see the speed test. Now we're actually getting a little faster than we did when we did it a second ago. Uh, we're using like 4% of the processor power here. And still the memory usage doesn't change. We're using like 98 megs. And for a reason, we're getting faster uploads now. And like I said, this is something you're gonna see some variations on there. Uh, and that hit and spiked us almost at 11% VPN. Not to mention my computer has other connections open like Google Drive and there's a whole litany of other things uh, that are open right now. So let's like do something like let's open uh, Reddit. So it's gonna call all these different functions. And still, you can see our CPU at the top here, hardly even moving to do any of that. And if we open up something like a YouTube video, which I'm careful what I'm open so I don't get some oh copyright God, claim. No. Jump over to YouTube, which lots of connections going on here. And no big deal, it's uh, not even really pulling any CPU. So it's really not a processor issue at all. It's all about just the networking throughput. A lot of you are going to ask the next question. So it obviously it's super easy to do this on Linux. Now, whether you're connecting a Linux box from the command line or something like mine here, it's easy just to switch your IP address and now I'm that IP address. But you're probably going to say, well, Tom, what about Windows? Because I need to run Windows for whatever reasons. So let me show you how this works inside of Windows. It's actually really easy to do. All right, so all I did was go over here, and like I said, I'll leave the links below to exactly where I went, but uh, this is the latest version as of November 2017 of OpenVPN 2.4. Here is the Windows Vista and Later installer, so we're going to head and download that. And we will just open it up real quick. Yep, and next and yes our way through this. The defaults are fine. 
Now, when you open it, it's going to tell you the user profile, C, users, Tom, open VPN config. So what we got to do now is copy that same file that we had and copy it over there. All right, now I've copied the file over to users, Tom, open VPN config. So we're going to open up open VPN again. And we're going to go to connect. And it doesn't ask me any questions because if there's only one config file, it only has one to connect to. And it lets me know, now connected. And there's the same IP address. That's all you have to do to get your Windows boxes on this VPN over the one I'm using here in Linode, or really any VPN. This is uh, just that easy to do. I've, I've been really impressed with the script because it really is kind of a no-brainer for, uh, for doing this. It's really easy to manage whether you're on Windows or on Linux, and it's uh, very little Linux knowledge needed to actually get this set up. Now, the good thing is it's a great learning tool because if you wanted to walk through everything that the script did, you can walk through the script and see all the settings in there. And then you can actually edit these files yourself as well. I'm going to shut this down. And this will actually show you the details of what's in here. So it's going to walk you through. You can change any of these options uh, as long as you match them on the server. But you can see that this OpenVPN file has everything in here that you need to connect. Now, I'm not, maybe I'll do a separate video if there's interest in this. Obviously, you can use this with your PFSense and put all of these exact settings using this file, not as a copy and paste of the file, but back into PFSense so you can, you know, do the same thing I showed with PIA, how you can VPN your whole network or proxy it over to this um, pretty easily. So, I just want to give this quick demonstration. It's really pretty easy to do, uh, and this script will get you started. I've even seen a few people who do it on Raspberry Pis who want to have a Raspberry Pi VPN server in their house. Raspberry Pis are inexpensive. You map just one single port, which is 1194 through the firewall, and Away you go, you can have this inside your network and it will offer access inside your network. Or when you put it in a cloud server like this, makes it really easy to change your IP address over to be that because you're tunneling all of your data through that connection. So hopefully this was helpful. If you uh, like the content here, like and subscribe. If you have questions, leave them below, but I'll put links to everything in here and below. And if you want to try to hammering on this server, by the time I publish this video, I'll already have it destroyed. <laughs> so uh, no big deal there because I noticed I did expose my certificate if someone wanted to actually do it. So uh, I realized that was an oops. Um, not that I cared that much. I, I spin these up and destroy them for testing anyways. All right. Thanks.